Holy Spirit who dwells within us. Lord, do not forsake that which you've given us. Restore to us the joy of our salvation this day and this day forward. We thank you for the power, the power and authority given to us through Jesus Christ so that we, we all may walk according to your will, your purpose, and your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
walk away from the one who saved my life. No, I'll never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. How could I ever walk away from the one who saved my life? No, I'll never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ.
Yeah. 
faithful God and you're a way maker Father when we need guidance you're our path when we need uh, direction and light you are the light when we need strength and healing you're our source of strength and healing when you need wisdom you're our source of wisdom this morning when we need encouragement you are the encourager <laughs> when we need to be lifted up your word says that you are the glory and the lifter of my head Father this morning we worship and praise you for who you are we thank you that you are the way maker where there sometimes there seems to be no way and no direction. Your word says that you'll never leave us and you'll never forsake us. Amen. Your word says that you will be with us even until the end of days. So Father, whatever we need this morning, may we just lay it at your feet and say, Father, I, am, I entrust this to you. Amen. If we need wisdom this morning, I trust in you. If I need answers this morning, I trust in you. If we need healing this morning, we trust in you. If we need comfort this morning, we lay it down and trust in you. We ask you to move in our lives. For there's none greater, there's no one better, and there's no other God. Your word says to lay our burdens on you, for you care deeply for us. This morning, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you that we can stand in your presence and exalt your name and praise you openly and change our circumstances, change our situations, and change ourselves. We give you praise this morning. Everybody give them your best praise offering. All right, well, if you're not seated yet, hug your neighbor, grab a seat. If you are seated, stand up and hug your neighbor and grab a seat. We will be known as the Church of Great Thighs. <laughs> that is who you are. 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 Thank you. Good job, Steve. Well, if you love the Lord this morning, say amen. amen. If you don't love the Lord yet this morning, our goal is that you will fall in love with him in the next one hour and 15 minutes. That's our goal. It's a pretty big task, but we think we're up to it. Not because we're anything great, but because the Lord is something ultra special. 
And if you don't know this Jesus that we've been singing about, man, I pray that the Holy Spirit would just speak to you this morning. Jesus says something amazing in John chapter 10. He's talking about the shepherd, the good shepherd, and how the sheep know his voice. And he says this, he says, I come that the sheep might have life and life more abundantly. And I asked the Lord years ago when I was still young, when I knew him face to face, because we were about the same age. And I said, Lord, what does it mean more abundantly? And he simply said, more abundantly than you'll ever achieve on your own. Because until we find our place in the Lord, we're really kind of living half a life. How do you know that? Because the Bible says that I am a masterpiece. I am specifically made according to God's design. You know what a masterpiece is? It's one of a kind. Turn to your neighbor and say, I am unique. I am unique. Just like everybody else. You see the irony there, right? <laughs> you are uniquely made and God, say this, God does not, God does not make, mistakes. make mistakes. God loves me, warts and all. He does, man. Everything about me, he's wired into me with the hope that I can change in Jesus Christ and mature until that day. Can you say amen? amen. Y'all seem like you're at about half throttle this morning. I know why, but I will not divulge the reason why. really want to. You ever feel like you're holding something inside and man's just going to pick it? What a wonderful week it's been in the Lord. What a wonderful night we had last night celebrating Miss Emma's 80th birthday. You know, and she's not here this morning, so we'll save some of this for next week. But, you know, I, I got to tell you, we went to a birthday party last night for Emma. And we stopped counting at about 120 people. And I hope I have 120 friends or influences at 80 years old. Because I don't imagine it's going to get bigger between now and 80. It's probably going to shrink because people are dying. Like Jimmy Buffett won't be at my service. At my local, so we took him off the list, sadly. But what a night it was. Just the fact, you know, of all of her siblings, she's the only one who lived to be 80. Wow. And what a reason for celebration. Yes. And as she was talking to us, she said, you know what? I want to celebrate this while I'm here. Amen. Don't celebrate me when I'm gone. Celebrate me tonight. Yes. And people celebrated her last night. Woo! Say amen. Say amen if your head doesn't hurt. Amen. <laughs> Got a little bit quiet in here. I told the church, I want, to, I want you to celebrate my 80th birthday. We're going to start next year. I'm not 80, but you're going to practice every year. And then by the time I am 80, you're going to be really good. If I'm not around, just take my ashes in and just celebrate your pastor. Can we do that? All right, we got a few things going on this morning. Pastor Dale texted me yesterday, and he said, Eric, he said, Pastor, I got this letter in the mail, and I want to read it to the church. Well, being a good pastor, I like to vet things rather than just, you know, regurgitate them out to the church. So I called Dale and we had this conversation and I said, man, that is really, really powerful. So I'm gonna, we're going to have Dale come up for just a few minutes. He's going to go over a letter that he got from a friend. You need to hear and see what God has done because this is amazing. And I don't want to steal the thunder, but there, there is nothing too small that you can do for God. The Bible says, despise not small beginnings. You know what that means in the Eric James version? Start somewhere. Don't make excuses. We don't have to swing for the fence every time. Do something for the kingdom of God. Amen. So a little, uh, I'll, I'll show you a letter to start with. Uh, this, uh, this, this, this letter is from a very dear friend of ours uh, out in, in um, Idaho. And her name is Candy Dawes. Um, Candy has a, a couple of kids. She has a daughter that she lives with part of the year, and uh, her daughter's name is Misty. Uh, and her son is is Danny. Uh, Danny was my apprentice when I was electrical contractor out there. Fabulous family. Um, Candy's husband passed away probably about twelve years ago. Uh, a dozen, a dozen or 15 years ago, I remember, died of, of uh, leukemia. Anyway, 
Um, Candy is the kind of person that writes letters to people, uh, obviously. Uh, and this one came at our anniversary. And uh, I'll tell you what, it, it just, it, it touched us so deeply. I, I immediately called the pastor and I said, we, we have to read this. Uh, so uh, it's, it's not an easy read, so uh, bear with me a little bit. Sometimes I miss period, uh, periods and commas and things, but uh, anyway. Uh, she says, okay, well, one other caveat. Um, Candy lives with her daughter, Melissa, Misty, in Pocatello area. Actually, they live on an Indian reservation there. Uh, she lives there part of the year, and then she goes back to Montpelier uh, to live with her son, Danny, uh, for a period of time, and then she goes back to the other way. So she's kind of back and forth. She gets to live with her kids. Uh, and um, so she says, when I stay with my Kulki family in Pocatello, uh, I take walks down this country road, they're, they're right, way out in the country. Uh, I pick up litter and decided to fill this ditch bank with sunflower seeds. And that was last fall. I asked my son-in-law Merlin if he could put a chair down at the corner for a <clears throat> timeout resting place. As I sat there waving at all the neighborhood neighbors driving by, I started leaving rocks that I'd collected, uh, some of them too heavy to carry as I sat there. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Beard. As I sat there praying for this little neighborhood, I thought, well, why not have a little rock garden with some little flowers? Great idea. I said to myself, I had a real, I had a real bird's nest, I had some feathers, and yes, lots of rocks. And I can't take any credit for the idea of this prayer garden uh, with names. By the way, the names are on the rocks. So she collects names and puts them on the rocks in her rock garden. Uh, so that idea came from the Holy Spirit. So I wrote a big letter and I left it on the chair. I said, dear friends, I really enjoyed your neighborhood. If you would like, if you would like personal prayer, please sign your name and I will pray for you. Beloved in Jesus, Kimmy Dawes. So when I came back, there were two names written down, Todd and Jack. And I was so shocked. I was speechless. And each week, more names. I brought more rocks <laughs> to make a bigger circle. Every vehicle that went by, and people waved and honked, honked their horns, and they gave me a thumbs up. And one lady stopped by and shared some emotional issues. She let me pray for her. A farmer drove by in a truck with his a lady hanging out the window, and as they <laughs> swung around the corner, she yelled out, are you going to plant more flowers? <clears throat> more names were appearing each week. I had no idea who most of these people were, but it didn't matter. God knew them all. Everything about their lives was important to him. This was spring of this year 2023 now it's august and i've been gone for a little while from there back to montpelier she went not to she died she went back to montpelier <laughs> so uh and so i'm happy to see the sunflowers are all in bloom and misty brings gallons of water down to the prayer garden and merlin keeps checking on my chair yeah. A grandma and her grandson came over with a wagon. They had, a, they had a watering can to help us out. He was a special needs child and was excited about seeing his name on one of the rocks. 
One day I met a lady on Government Road who seemed to be in a hurry and she said, I need to get to the prayer garden. I have to have an interview today for a job and I'm getting really nervous about it. And we visited for a while and then she went on. Today I met a 17 year old Choctaw Indian boy and he was strong and very interested in helping me collect more rocks for the prayer garden. And he brought his beat up mower with a small trailer and down into the ditch bank uh, to get a, a hundred pound rock. And he said, you have to use leverage for this kind of a job. And I said, oh yes, indeed. And after much strain and getting stuck in the muck, a uh, good old dad came in his four wheeler and pushed him out. And he carried out a 50 pound rock by sheer strength. And added many more rocks for many more names. And he said later, my grandma told me about Jesus the other morning. And as I looked out the window, I asked God to show me a lightning strike. And Jesse said, the whole sky lit up with a lightning strike. And he said, I've got it all on my camera. <laughs> Amazing. And I instantly thought of this verse. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Psalm 19, 1. I said, well, dear friends, I would like to write more stories, but I need to get busy and gather more rocks. Wow. That's amazing. So my takeaway from that is, ask God something you can do. Yeah. And he'll, you know, the, in Proverbs, there's a proverb that says, in one translation, I love what it says. It says, the Lord will give you crafty ideas. Yeah. And that's not crafty as in like sinister. Right. It's crafty as in inventive, yeah. ingenuitive, creative. Yeah. Ask God for crafty ideas. Maybe it starts with baking an apple pie. Your pastor likes apple pie. <laughs> But don't give it to your pastor. Give it to someone who needs to know the Lord. Yes. I mean, there's so many simple things we can do. What a great letter. It started with some sunflowers and a chair. And the letter she wrote was, dear friends, if you need prayer, just write your name down. Dorothy and I, in our travels, we've been to a, a couple of cities and I don't remember which one this was in. It was in Tennessee, Elizabethton, Tennessee. I do remember. We went to this little tiny diner and outside the diner, you know how people put their chalkboard up there, the menu on it. They had this really big chalkboard up here and it said, please write your prayer requests. We would love to pray with you. Wow. And I thought that's a good way to use a menu board. Wow. So we ate there three times just because we loved what they were doing. And then we paid, prayed to be healed from food poisoning. But other than that, it was a really <laughs> successful trip. That's not true. So what a great story, right? So your challenge is over the next month, Lord, give me a witty and a crafty idea. There's something I can do for my neighbors that will start small and look how big her prayer ministry grew. Amen. People came to seek her out and rely on her. What an amazing connection to the Lord. And that's what we're about, connecting people with God's provision. Amen. Ask the Lord what your connecting conduit looks like. Will you do that? Say amen. amen. All right, well, listen. So, for those of you who noticed we weren't here last week, thank you very much. For those of you who didn't notice, we'll meet with you after church today. Uh, Pastor D and I had an opportunity to get out of the state of Florida in August. Say hallelujah. And uh, spent some time in upstate New York in this wonderful cabin with no internet, no radio, no clock, no TV. Uh, it's pretty sweet up there, I gotta tell you. 65 degrees, it was just nice. And, then we got to travel to Connecticut and see my daughter and my son-in-law and our one and only absolutely gorgeous grandbaby. Uh, I won't bore you with pictures. I only have 17 of them, so hang tight. <laughs> I don't. Check out my Facebook page. You will see this little redhead in her sippy cup. And uh, that hair when you go outside looks like somebody plugged it in. Like it's just fake red. How does this hair get so orange? But she's adorable. So the good news is that we've reached a place in the storehouse where we have such great anointed and quality leadership that when we're gone, you're in good hands. Yeah. 
And because I was on vacation, I didn't want to have to study up there, so I took another week off today. And um, you're also in really, really good hands. So if you would this morning, would you please welcome our worship pastor, Pastor Leanne. Amen. asked me what I preached while they were, you know, coming back from vacation and everything, I said, well, let me pray about it. I did pray about it. And of course, God said yes. But coming up through this week and everything that's been going on and everything, I'm like, what the heck did I agree to? <laughs> but you know, God is good all the time. And Jay, um, the worship that you picked, very, a lot of it went with what the message is going to be today. So thank you, worship team. You did me proud. So thank you so much. So this scripture that I'm going to be focusing on today, the Lord has put it on my heart over the last month since pastor asked me to preach. And I went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But, you know, he really focused me when it came down to putting it on. And now I understand why. Because of the things that are going in people's lives. The things that um, he wants to do through it. So, how many of you know that when we become believers, we don't come with a ready index of what the whole Bible says. We don't have built-in concordances. We don't have commentaries. We don't have any of that. The way we get that is that as we walk the walk into maturity, we, we go study the word, we memorize the word, we get it inside of us. And then we sit under good teaching and solid teaching. By the time that we're through, we're walking through that, we start to realize, you know what, God, there's something in there. And we start to realize that we are now maturing into believers. But even mature believers, we don't always get it right. You agree with that? Yes. The verse that I'm going to use today is one of my favorite verses and one of my not so favorite verses. <laughs> I say it's not my most favorite. However, it is one of the most quoted and memorized verses in the Bible, but it's also one of the most misunderstood and misquoted verses in the Bible. And I bring to you this message that says, did he really say that? You know, how many of you have read something and you really thought you knew what it said, but then you didn't know what it said? Somebody came up to you and said, do you realize that you kind of use that out of context? I think we've all been there. We all will do that no matter what. Sometimes we just don't get it. We don't get the full scope. So the verse that he focused me on was Romans 8:28. And it says, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. You know, this scripture is full of great promise, isn't it? I mean, it can really lift you up. But when you realize sometimes that the good doesn't come right away, it can also bring you crashing down. What we do as believers, sometimes we only take that first part of that verse that says, you know, God causes everything to work together for, for his believers and for those that love him, right? Well, yes and no. <laughs> he does. But you know what? There's a process. And there's more to the scripture than just the fact that, he, that we believe, yes, he is a good God. Yes, he is a good God. But... When we really realize that there's things we have to go through, we start to question just how good he really is. So my question is, did Paul really say that? And once again, the answer is yes, and it's no. In our desire to comfort people, to comfort others, to even encourage and comfort ourselves, we'll quote this verse, but we, we might say the whole verse, but we, we skip over the meaning and the context of the verse. You know, he was talking before this, he was talking about the partnership with the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit directs us, how he will be with us in our weaknesses and everything else. And he comes to this and he's telling these people that, 
And we know that God causes everything and they're going, well, I'm not seeing it. So when trying to comfort people, you might get different reactions. If you don't take the full context of the verse, a person can actually spiral. They can start to see that there's no good gonna come out of this. You know, how possibly is there any good gonna come out of this tragedy? How is there gonna be good coming out of Hurricane Idalia? How out of Hurricane Nicole and Ian? How is there gonna be any good come out of sickness and death? How, how, how? We begin to question that. And then we start maybe feeling feelings of discouragement, depression, possibly, of um, anger, and maybe even confusion. You know, the devil's playground is our mind. So if we don't know the word of God, he can mess with us and he can twist it until you get to that place where you can say, uh-uh, my God said. You know, when... Um, <laughs> When my husband was in the hospital that last week of his life, and when my son was, you know, had passed away, I can't tell you the amount of people, including pastors, that came through and said, you know, God will work everything together for good, and you know they're in a better place, and blah, blah, blah. You know, I can't tell you how many I wanted to get in the flesh immediately, use the fist, the fist of fellowship, right? And set them straight. I mean, wasn't good for me and my family. But you know what? A lot of good did come out of it. A lot. I've been able to walk out this verse. But because we humans are like microwaves, we like the microwave word, world. We want it now, and we want it whole and now, the way we want it. It's not that with this verse, most of us feel like we have to perform in order to get him to answer our prayers, but many do think that our prayers aren't answered because we did something wrong. The only thing that we did wrong is listen to the devil, taking this verse out of context and messing with our mind. God is truly a good God, and he's all about completing the works that he started. He doesn't start something and not finish it. That isn't his character. That's not his nature. He will complete it till the day that Christ Jesus comes back. But in order for him to move in our lives and work that together for good, there is that process that he's going to work in us. Because truly what it says is that he can cause everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. So because we tend to form unrealistic expectations in many areas of our life, not just prayer, not just the scripture, but we set real unrealistic expectations and people feel like they got to jump up over this bar. We're the same way with God a lot of times. We set him up for our failure, if that makes any sense at all because we took what he wrote through Paul and we took it out of context and we didn't understand that in that good, there were gonna be trials, there was gonna be sorrows. <clears throat> so many times I have watched over the years, I've been walking with the Lord uh, for 40 years now, I've been in ministry for 30, and I have watched so many people um, that didn't get their prayers answered the way that they thought that it should be. They've walked away. They've ran away. They've hidden. They've been angry at God. They shake their fist at him and say, why? Just like um, uh, Job's friends wanted him to shake their fist at everything that he went through. You know, people in their discouragement, they, they do that. It's all because they didn't get the prayer that they wanted. And a lot of times when we get that way, we end up sick. We end up sick in our body. We end up sick in our mind. We end up sick. And we sicken a lot of things around us. Um, Proverbs 17, 22 says, A joyful heart is good medicine, but depression drains one's strength. And Proverbs 13, 12 says, A hope deferred makes a heart sick but a longing of desire 
fulfilled as a tree of life. <clears throat> While pastoring up north, um, I had the wonderful privilege of ministering to many people, and I, I work side by side by such great people, just like you guys down here. But in the events that took place in our church before we ended up closing it was um, a series of deaths. Now, we had a lot of prayer warriors, people that prayed hard, they prayed strong, they pray, prayed the word, they stood believing and, and believing for healing and these people being raised up. The first person to pass away was my husband. The second was my women's leader, not four um, uh, months later from cancer. And then we had a series of parents uh, pass away of several family members in our congregation. But there's one in particular that stood out. And she was a dear friend of mine. She was gifted. She was anointed. Her and her daughter were side and side by side in women's ministry. And they delivered to those women the grace and the love of God in a way that just far surpasses, um, of, you know, my understanding of how, you know, they did. But, but this person, I won't say her name in case any of my friends are or anybody's listening back up north, they may be. Um, she struggled. She prayed. She believed. She believed the words that were spoken, that they would be healed, that they would be raised up. And they were. They took their last breath on this earth and their first in heaven. They were whole and they were healed. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not that I didn't go through, I did. I struggled for four years, but God anointed me. God gave me the power, God gave me the strength to come out, to give a message, to lead worship, to do the things, minister to the people. And when I was done, I'd walk out, the air would go out of my toes and it was all over, that's all she wrote. But, you know, the beginning of verse 28, go back to that, would you please? It says, and we know. This is not a no, like we know, it's in our mind, it hasn't got to our heart, but we know, you know? This is a knowing in our knower. This is a confidence that only comes through the Holy Spirit and the experiences we've had with God and the belief and the faith that we stand on. And we know that God will bring about good in this horrible trial and sorrow. We know that he is who he says he is. We know that he will do what he says he will do. And he does. It just may not fit our picture. You know, Sandy had a picture. Whoops, sorry, I slipped. But she had a picture. She had a picture of being able to go on in life with her daughter at her side, sitting under a pastor that she loved. And that didn't happen. So it brought about depression. It brought about anger. I mean, bless her heart. I mean, I love her. She was one of my best friends, but she turned her back on the church. She turned her back on her friends. She left the support and fellowship of the people because she was so angry at God because he didn't bring good about at that time. He did not raise them up from the cancers that they were suffering from. There's many of us sitting here today that have same situations. We've gone through things that can cause us to have a hope deferred. We've gone through those things that aren't good. You know, there are gonna be things in this world every day, all day long that aren't good. Cancer isn't good. Sickness of any kind is not good. Uh, the evil that we see going on around us, it's not good. You know, hatred, it's not good. <clears throat> I didn't put this in my notes, but I wanna share with you something that I found along the way. Um, how many of you know Johnny uh, Erickson Tata? I mean, wonderful believer in Christ, active in so many ways through sports through ministry through all of that but one day she made a fateful mistake and she dove into the chesapeake bay and she um ended up breaking her neck and became a quadriplegic 
in a wheelchair. So for over 40 years now, she's been in a wheelchair. And she's learned a lot of things, like she's learned to paint with her teeth, she speaks, she's an author, she is um, a singer, she's all these things. And somebody asked her once, they said, how can you say God is good and does good when you sit there in that wheelchair as you are? And she says, my God uses the things that are hateful to bring about the things that he loves. Wow. How can I, as a believer, as a child of God, how can I do any different with all the trials I've had in my life? I can't do anything that is different. And church, God is good. It just get in your head and your heart that it's not always gonna look good at the moment what's going on. It doesn't good, look good right now with the life that we're living in this world, does it? It doesn't feel good. People don't like us. You know that? There are people out there that don't like us. And Marcy and Eric, they brought the whole uh, thing into the light about the persecuted church. Well, we in this, it's, it's building and building and building the persecution here in this country. It's not good. But look at the stories. Look at the testimonies that they brought forth in their message. And I'm telling you what, that's not any part of my message, but it goes right along with it. It's a fact that we need as a church to understand this verse that God causes everything to work together for good. To who? Number one, to those who love him. Number two, it's his purpose for them, not ours. You know, we got a plan. How many of you had a plan? You, you know, graduate high school, go to college, get this amazing job, have this amazing family. Everything's gonna be hunky-dory fine. The kids are gonna be great. They're gonna love us. They're gonna listen to us. They're gonna do everything we tell them to do, right? I mean, <laughs> does anybody's story look that way? Because <laughs> I know mine doesn't. Oh, uh, Destiny, you haven't gotten that far in life yet, so it's okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, my life does not look that way. And, um, but you know what? Look at this. I don't come here with a, a, a mask on. When I worship the Lord, when, I, when I'm around other believers, when I'm out there in the world, this is who I am. I don't wear a mask that puts on that church face and says, oh, it's fine. You know, it's fine. I'm fine. Everything is good. But when no, in fact, it's not. Underneath, there's all this turmoil. There's this, this where all these decisions need to be made. There's all this stuff going on. But you know what? But God, God has done such amazing things in my life. Have I had trials and sorrows like he promised that we would? In John, in John 16, 33, he says, I have told you this so that you may have peace in me here on this earth you will have many trials and you will have sorrow. He says, but take heart. He says, because I've overcome the world. Now you may not see that overcoming. You may not feel that overcoming. What that say? Even if you don't see it, he's working. Even if you don't feel it, he's working. He's working and he's always worried. Being a believer, I'm gonna tell you right now, in case I'm sure you, a lot of you, this is not a surprise, but being a believer is not for the faint at heart. It is not. You know, it is not my crutch. It is not, it's not been one of the hardest walks I've walked in my lifetime. You know, I used to think it was bad when I was growing up. But oh, no, 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 no. Once I accepted the Lord, every part of hell that could break loose, it broke loose. You know, but you know what? It's been an amazing journey. It's been an amazing, because I have learned a lot. You know, even when I was pastoring up north, I, I didn't aspire to being a pastor, but I chose to accept the privilege after my husband passed. And I pastored for three years and, and then decided, you know what? God, you didn't call me to be a senior pastor. Praise the Lord. You get it. Tag your it. Um, you know, I didn't like wearing the, the, that little target on me, you know, but I learned so much. I learned so much and I was deeply loved and I loved deeply. You know, um, God, God will give you the strength. He will grow you. Because I don't know, 
If you don't know him intimately, like Pastor said, I pray today that would be the day if you don't have him as your savior, or even if you have him as your savior and you know that you know that you know you're not doing what he asked you to do, you're not growing, you're kind of staying where you're at and everything, um, I encourage you, you're gonna have the trials, but grab onto the peace that he gives you. You know, we grieve the Holy Spirit when we reject God's comfort. Are you aware of that? The Holy Spirit is our comforter. And when we reject him and his comfort, it grieves him. So I encourage you to, when you're going through those trials and sorrow that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ promised, promised we would go through, um, grab onto that peace and that comfort. You can't control everything and every one around you for those of you that don't understand that um, most things are out of our control you know we have this little circle the circumference like a little hula hoop around us everything inside of that hula hoop it's all about you and and letting god do what he's going to do but anything outside it's all about him and him doing it in those others and in situations we cannot control but he promises that through those troubles and through the pain that he will ultimately bring about the good in our lives and those around us. As a reminder, it is about him. Jay, you heard the first song. It's all about you. It's all about you. It is all about God. This is a walk that we can't walk without the Lord himself. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to show us which steps to take. You know, today I prayed, these are all notes. I told him, I says, these are just words on a page. You know, I felt as I was writing it out, that's what he wanted me to say, but it's a guideline. It's for him to come and say what he's gotta say and do what he's gotta do through it. And so I submit to him, I humble myself before him and I let him take all that stuff everything that he the reason he focused me on this message and i let him turn it around together for good so what would the good be today would be that you allow him to show you those places as well it's always for his glory it's never for our glory it is our good that he works but it's his glory that we're to focus on um the preceding verses, as I said earlier, in Romans 26 through 20 says, it tells us that the Holy Spirit is there in our weakness. You know what, everybody, I'm not strong every day. I'm not strong all the minutes of a day, sometimes for a couple days. But when I allow the Holy Spirit in to be my strength in my weakness, he'll give me what to do, what to pray, He'll be my helper that Jesus promised that he would leave for us. And you know, when he gets into the mix, when you allow him, even when you don't know what to pray, he prays for you. And then while he's praying for you and the, and the uh, prayers are going up, God is the best at interpreting what it is that we need in our life. So once again, Romans 8, 28 doesn't mean that all things will be good. Everything we face in life, it's going to have a trial. It's going to have a treasure. It's going to be good. It's going to be bad. It's going to be what it is at times. But God, you know, as long as Satan rules the darkness in this world, there will be, he'll continue to wreak havoc in our lives and in the world you see it around everything that's going on we've got natural i don't know that satan caused it i don't know but i i have a suspicion you know we're going to see those natural disasters we're going to see the wars we're going to see the famines we're going to see all the trouble that we're seeing we're going to see families that don't turn to him that are broken we're going to see children being used for a purpose that they weren't designed to be used for and abused and, and others and adults and teenagers being used we're going to see governments in place that aren't fair to the people. We're gonna see this because right now, this world, Satan has 
It's his uh, domain, correct? But it won't be forever because one day our Lord and Savior is coming back and he's coming back to restore us. He's coming back to redeem what the devil stole. He's coming back. And even though he, the devil himself has power, you know, don't ever look and say, oh, you know, I know what that spirit can do. I know it, you know. Yeah, you don't know it well enough to be able to talk like that because he is powerful. But God, God is all powerful. God never changes. He is the same yesterday and today and forever. God is the most powerful. And when God decides something's going to be done, it's going to be done. So when he says there's going to be good come out of it, there's going to be good come out of it. Now it is your turn to say, I have little faith, Lord, but give me greater faith to believe. Hilary Scott, <clears throat> I don't know if you know, she's a Christian artist, but she sings a song called Thy Will. And Thy Will, you know, it not only exposes our own thoughts and feelings as we go through trials and tribulations, but it also expo exposes the attitude of our heart that we should have as we go through them. Let me just read to you some of the lyrics. It says, I'm so confused. I know I heard you loud and clear. So I followed through. Somehow I ended up here. I don't want to think I may never understand that my broken heart is a part of your plan. When I try to pray, all I've got is hurt and these four words, thy will be done. And then it continues, I know you're good, but this don't feel good right now. Are there some of you that just don't feel good right now with what you're going through? I get it. And I know you think of things I could never think about. It's hard to count it all joy, distracted by the noise, just trying to make sense of all of your promises. Sometimes I gotta stop. Remember that you're God and I am not. I know you see me. I know you hear me. Lord, your plans are for me and not against me. I just added that. But goodness that you have in store. I can only imagine what it is that she was going through when she sang this song. And um, many times when we share songs on that level, it's, it's from that heart. I know after Hap passed away, um, he passed away in September, December, I was at Pastor Rogers Church singing a song regarding the trials of Mary's journey to Christ being born, everything that she went through. And you know, the anointing of God, the goodness of God, it touched those people. It, it, they could see that I was hurting. I was hurting. But you know what? I allowed God to do what only God can do. And that's what we need to do. We need to have the faith big enough to say, God, I need more faith. You know, it's little, but we need more. Hebrews eleven six says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So you see, in order to see the good, we have to have the faith in the one who cannot lie. He never lies. His promises are true. When he promises something, when he says something, they are yea and they are amen. No ifs, ands, or buts. That is the way it is. So when he gave us that promise in, in Romans 8, 28, he spoke truth. He just didn't tell you when it was going to happen. So when we cry out to him, he does understand that when we pray, <laughs> we're going to be selfish. We're going to pray our desires, right? I mean, I do. I want it a certain way. And I'm going to pray that. And he knows that. You know, but ultimately, we as our children, as his children, need to humble ourselves. It is a humbling experience to admit you don't got it all together. You don't know what's going on. You don't know what's going to happen. And you need to submit to his will and only his will in our lives. 
He is the only one that knows the outcome and the answer. And as we begin to trust him and say, thy will be done, Lord, we can say, okay. We laid out our desires, our requests, our petitions, but yet we end with, nonetheless, Lord, thy will be done. So as um, we're going to take this time to start transitioning into um, communion. So Pastor, if you'd come up as we discussed and, and start playing and then um, Dale and Barb, uh, I'm gonna continue here, but as we consider Romans 8, 28, we're gonna consider it as the what God can and what God will do. But we're gonna look at now, we're gonna look at Romans um, 8, 29 through 30, and we're going to consider that as we're going through it, the why he did and does what he does. Okay? Can we do that? I don't hear any yeses, but I, I'm assuming you're awake out there. You guys must have partied hard last night, huh? I saw nothing. <laughs> you saw nothing? I know nothing. So it's a good thing that you got a pastor to hold your confidence, right? <laughs> so... Romans 8, 29 through 30 says, This is true because he already knew his people and had already appointed them to have the same form as the image of his son. Therefore, his son is the firstborn among many children. He also called those whom he has already appointed. He approved of those whom he had called and he gave glory to those who whom he approved of. And you know, I also like the message version and I would like for you to really um, open your ears, have those ears to hear right now um, as it expounds on that last verse. So the message version, Kenny, thank you. God knew what he was doing from the very beginning. Imagine that. The creator and the planner knew what he was doing. He decided from the outset to shape the lives of those who love him along the same lines as the life of his son. The son stands first in a line of humanity he restored. We see the original and intended shape of our lives in him. Does that not give you encouragement and hope that you can see that whole, what God had planned in his son, Jesus Christ? So after God made that decision of what his children should be like, he followed it up by calling people by name. After he called them by name, he set them on a solid basis with himself. And then after getting them established, he stayed with them to the end, gloriously completing what he had begun. I serve that God. And I love that God. Could I do better? at learning to spend time, more time with him and in the word, absolutely. I'm not perfect. I let things distract me. But you know, I know that I know that I know God wants a family fashioned after his son to come into communion with him. He wants a relationship with us like he has with his son. You may have gone through hell in your life. You may have areas where you still feel hate and unforgiveness towards somebody or something that interrupted the goodness you thought should be in your life. You're no different than the person sitting next to you. We all struggle in that area. But I promise you this, he won't let one part of that go to waste not one part he will use every good thing bad thing ugly thing in your life and he'll lose it use it for your benefit and others benefits he'll use it as your friend i'm sure that her life wasn't all peachy keen but look at what she's done how many people that she's used she had a heart for god and everything that he did and he, she wanted to share it with the world God wants a family with you and me. He wants to use us to grow ourselves and each other. 
and he wants us to use to use us to advance his kingdom for his glory so as you come up right now um, Barb and Dale if you would come up and just hand out the elements I'm going to go ahead and transition Dale I'm going to go ahead and take the, the message of the communion if that's okay okay and um, if you'll come up in an orderly fashion come down on my right your left get your elements and then go down the left hand aisle and Barbara can I get pastors in mind thank you very much I don't know if you're going to be able to do this or not so as we're taking communion today I'm going to ask you to remember Just like us, Jesus' walk on this earth wasn't a cakewalk either. Life isn't always fun. But you know, he was being that example for us. God had a plan. And he knew the beginning, the end, the middle of that plan. And he was willing to sacrifice it all for you and me. He was willing to go through that rejection. He was willing to go through the loss of his dear friend. He was willing to go through the humiliation and the bullying and the beating and the pain. He was willing to go through the abandonment of his own father as he hung on that cross for us. God hates sin. He can't look upon sin. And our Jesus was wearing that sin for us. He was willing to go through the sorrow that you might be feeling today. The f <sighs> he loved us that much, church, to go through that and sacrifice his life. He stepped out of heaven as the Trinity, Father God, the Son Jesus and the Holy Spirit and he became a man that he could do this for us because he didn't tell God nope sorry can't do that are you kidding me that pain are you 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 know what they're gonna do to me right you know what I'm gonna experience he says father thy will be done just as Jesus would pull away And he would seek a place where he could be quiet before our Father, in communion with him, where he could be restored, where he could be refreshed, where he could gain that strength needed to continue the walk to the cross and everything that was detailed. Can you make room for the Lord today? 
Can you and I sit here and ask the Lord and say, Father, show me the areas where I've not made room for you. How can I improve? Lord, I know I can improve. But sometimes I just don't know how to. I don't know how to push all this other stuff aside. I don't want to disappoint my children. I don't want to disappoint them. They want, they want, they want, and I want to please them. I don't want to disappoint my spouse. Oh my gosh, no, are you kidding? Have you ever seen someone when they get angry? Well, you know what? I'm going to put them first. I don't want to just please my boss. You know, when he says I'm going to work 80 hours a week instead of 40 like normal people, I'm going to do it because, because God intended when he created us for God the Father, for God to be first, spouse comes next, children, ministry and job are way down here. I used to work a lot. I worked three jobs sometimes to pay the bills. I worked a lot at the church. My poor kids never saw us. We were always at the church, always working for God. Now you don't hear me saying, doing the things God called us to do, right? We did what our pastors wanted us to do. We didn't put God first. We put everyone else in everything. Today, as we commune with God, will you make room for him? Will you make a decision that today, you may have said it a week ago or two weeks ago or a year ago or whatever, and you didn't follow through. Hey, I'm right there with you. But will you ask God, Show me how to make more room for you and then give me the strength and the courage and the motivation to move forward and to do that. Will you begin to commune with him? Will you come into a greater relationship with our father? Because that's what he wants with you. He wants a family that is fashioned after his son. And his son only did what he saw the father do. He only spoke what the father put in him to speak. Will you allow your heart to be changed today? <coughs> As a community of believers, and we are a community, we have to even do better about communing with one another, of being in community, not just our church, but others outside. And when you go to use Romans 8, 28, will you remember to use it in context? Because God will use that one of two ways. He'll allow you to use it to a non-believer to draw them to his love. And then he'll use it in our lives to grow us through the pain, strengthen us and increase our faith. So would you hold up uh, the bread? Jesus said to do this in remembrance of me. We're to remember his sacrifice. We're to remember the life that he laid down for us. If you don't remember the sacrifice and the price that was paid for you, how can you ever understand his love for you? Luke 22, 19 says, he took some bread and he gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Will you do this in remembrance of him for his broken, beaten body, the sacrifice? Will you take this believing that he is God and you are not, that he is still on the throne, he still heals, he still delivers, and he still brings peace in the storm. And if you'll hold up the cup. The next verse says, 
After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, This is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement that was confirmed by my blood, which was poured out as a sacrifice for you. Jesus shed his blood for us. He shed it knowing what he was doing. Will you know that in your knower today that he did it because he loved you and he wants you to walk in the freedom of who you are in Jesus. Not who you are that others say you are, but who you are in Jesus. And that's that you are unique and you were made one of a kind, loved by him, completely, listen to me, completely forgiven. That doesn't mean you had you were forgiven for this sin or that. You were forgiven. Your past, your present, and your future, he forgave you. Does that mean that we won't have to ask forgiveness at times? Sometimes we mess up. But you're forgiven and you're deeply loved. So when you take this wine, the symbol of the bloody shed for us, settle that in your heart. You're loved, deeply loved. Oops, turned the wrong end of it. So, so I have some takeaways today for you. And I hope that this touched your heart in a way that would transform some, whatever you're struggling with on the inside of you. I know it did me. Preachers, we preach, we give messages, and it's not always for just you. It's mostly sometimes for us. God wants to work a work in us as well. So let's remember that nothing we experience here on this earth, good, bad, or ugly, goes to waste and God will use it all I never believed that until I took a walk with pastors Roger and Heather we were up visiting them on a vacation one time at Nemecola in Pennsylvania and we're walking down this walk you know just having a leisurely time and he stops and he looks at me I mean and I'm thinking what <laughs> um, he says Leanne he says the Lord wants you to know that nothing you've been through will go to waste. That he will use everything that's happened in your life. Everything that you've done or been done to you, doesn't matter. He'll use it. And to this day, you know what? God's kept his word. I have ministered to people in positions where I had, they went through the same thing I went through. They were struggling with the same things I struggled with. He will use it all. Number two, the good may not come right away. <laughs> All the time I want it to be good now, but it's not going to work that way. We may not see it at first. We may not even understand it, but he will cause good to come out of the trials we face. Just be patient. Allow your faith to grow. Trust in him. Number three, it is for our good, but it's for his glory. And we need to make our lives count. <clears throat> we need to allow the hard things to shape us for the good he intends. People can read you. You're walking in. They're going to see what kind of person you are. You're either going to be emitting it like a glow of the Holy Spirit or your eyes are going to be. Mm -mm, that person may have a mask on, but I see who they are. Um, my uh, daughter-in-law shared with me a story this last week which broke my heart actually um, I've been trying to witness it to her in the ways that the Lord would have me to do at times and she told me this last week she says I am so tired of my boss being the way that he's being that day now let me back up the boss is a Christian now I can't judge him because I don't see his fruits, but she's seeing the fruits. I don't know the intent of his heart. God knows the intent of his heart. He knows who he is and what he is. But 
she said, she says, he calls himself a Christian, but one of our coworkers brought up something in a meeting that he didn't like. And after the meeting, he caught her in the hallway and was yelling at her and screaming at her because of what she did. And she says, the, then she, he started complaining about patients and the patient that he's complaining about is sitting right there in a room. I can't say that I've never had those moments, but I can tell you that as God shows me, I'm, I'm doing whatever I can to say, I'm so sorry, that is not who I am. That's not who my God is. And I pray that that man comes to the same um, understanding and apologizes and begins to allow God to work those things. But remember, it's not about us. Everything we do is to bring glory to the Father. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to change us. Through his leading, we will do what God wants us to do. We will become what he has designed for us to do. And remember that God sees you as a finished product already. He doesn't see you as the mistake you think you are or the, or the mess up you think you are. He sees you as his treasure his precious child. Number, whatever we're on, four, I believe, or five. So when God allows the trouble, run to him. Don't run away. Run to the family of Christ. You know, we've got some pretty amazing leaders here. We really do. We've been tried. We've been seasoned. Sometimes we feel like we, you could stick a fork in. We've been cooked real well done. But we, we have the wisdom many times of what, you know, and the fact that we look to the Lord. We want what he wants for you. Don't run away. When things hurt and they don't feel good, don't withdraw. Don't hide. And definitely don't put on the Christianese mask. If you're hurting, we want to know. Do we want to see you every week like that and, and walking in as, as Winnie Pooh's friend, you know, the Eeyore did, you know, my, you know, like, the whole Thanks point. Thanks for noticing. <laughs> Thanks for noticing. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Uh, but when you receive ministry, allow it to change you. See, God doesn't want us to stay comfortable. I can't remember the last time I was comfortable. <laughs> Every day, there's something new to um, challenge me to be the best me that God created me to be. And I'm asking you to do that. Cry out to the only one who can bring you his peace and the only one that has the answer. And then lastly, seek his will above all earthly wants and desires. No matter matter no matter you can cry out to him and say God this is what I want this is what I want this is what I need I needed my husband to stay on this earth I needed my son at that time I mean you're not supposed to bury your children right but more than any of that I needed God's will and I needed the peace that came with that knowing that his will would be done, that good would come out of the suffering and the sorrow. So remember that. And um, can we just pray? Will you bow your heads and will you pray with me? Say, Father, sometimes I can't understand how you can bring the beauty from the ashes of my life. I truly struggle, Lord, sometimes to trust you with my broken pieces. But you say in your word that without that faith, I can't please you. And Lord, my deepest desire is to please you, to make more room for you, to learn what it is to commune with you, to be intimate with you. Into me you see, Lord. Help me to be transparent to you, Lord. I trust you at this moment. Help me to trust you more. When I don't believe, Lord, help my unbelief. And Lord, I ask more than you use these trials. Use the trials and the sorrows in my life to change me for my good 
for the good of those around me, for my family, Lord. And Lord, may it all bring you glory. Help me to believe the full promise and the process of Romans 8, 28. And I ask all this in the strong and mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Go ahead and give the Lord some praise. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor Leanne, what a great word. Yeah. And some takeaways. I like takeaways. Well, are you still with us? Say amen. amen. So here's what we're going to do. A couple things. Um, I want to welcome Tanya back this morning. Good to see you again. Thank you so much. I'm assuming that's your grandson with you who we have kidnapped. Oh, he's over there. I thought we kidnapped him and took him to the back. We have Did you pay the ransom? Because you got him back. Good, good. Way to go. So good to see Tanya. Uh, ben and Mandy were here. I think they might still be here, maybe in the back. So if they are, hug them, love them, tell them good morning. Um, I'm only gonna make two announcements this morning and then we're gonna go to fellowship and then we have a leadership meeting afterwards. So leadership meeting, I would like to start that by 12.20. So fellowship time is gonna conclude at 12.15. That gives you about 25 minutes. So only two announcements. One is the Women's Beach Getaway is coming up. Yeah, but that's not what this announcement is about. <laughs> so, if you're not going to the Women's Beach Getaway, I have an announcement for you. And that announcement is this, and I'm going to send it out in an email as well. So, we know that there's about 475 women going to the beach that weekend. <laughs> and there's about four of us going to be at church that Sunday. So, if you're among us going to be here, listen carefully. We're going to have a little bit of a different service. We're gonna have some, uh, we're gonna have worship, but here's what I want you to do, and I'm gonna send this out in an email. I want you to bring to church that Sunday your favorite scripture and a reason why it is your favorite scripture. Why does it mean what it means to you? What has the Lord done in your life? And reveal the scripture to you. So everybody should have at least one and up to two favorite scriptures. Bring those and have a short, explanation of why God has used that in your life. So in other words, we're going to minister to one another that Sunday morning. Because that's what body minister, you know we're supposed to do that, right? The Jesus model isn't me up here talking to you all the time. The real Jesus model is he has empowered the church to empower and encourage one another. So that's what we're going to do on that Sunday. Write down your favorite scripture or two, bring it, and share why it means so much to you. That is on Sunday, September 28th. Say, I'm going to be here. Amen. Amen. All four of us. Good job. Now, the other uh, announcement is our men's fishing trip is coming up October 28th. That's a month after the ladies' thing. So there's a sign-up sheet, I think, in the foyer. Yes? Mark's got a sign-up sheet. Put your name on there. Put some contact information. We're going to need the money turned in the, Saturday, the Sunday before the 28th. So you can either pay it on Tithely and mark it uh, men's fishing trip. You can turn it in in tithes and offerings as a special offering, but mark it men's fishing trip. We have room for 18. We are capped out at 18. So we need to fill that and make sure we have three boats full. Say, yes, go. Yes, go. All right. That concludes the announcements, I think, from, is there anything else I missed that's important, ladies and gentlemen? Nobody's paying attention, so we're going to move ahead. Oh, Miss Peggy? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Okay. Well, so remember to pray for uh, Ben. Yes, Father, we lift Ben up right now and ask you to touch him, Lord, and heal his body even this afternoon. Lord, that he can rest and be healed in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for that today. So, uh, stand if you would. You know our methods for giving. And uh, you can pay with a tithe envelope in front of you, in the chair in front of you. You can go online. You can use the church app. You can even text money to the, name on the, to the number on the screen. Father... What a great day it's been in the house of the Lord. What a presence of God and a move, Lord. What a powerful word. And we just thank you that you are consistently showing up in our services. Amen. Because it is really all about you. <laughs> it's not about us. It's not about me. It truly is about Christ. And without the Holy Spirit, we have no reason Amen. to assemble ourselves together. 
So, Father, we thank you. Uh, we challenge ourselves this week to find a small way to minister to people as we walk through this week. Lord, give us crafty ideas in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen. amen.